Hello, my name is Stephen and this is Faith Ministries. As you may recall, a few videos are back. We did some on the Tyndale Bible and also on the Geneva Bible. If you have a look at this particular chart, we see that we had the Erasmus Greek text coming through to produce the Tyndale's New Testament, uh, which formed then the Great Bible, the Bishop's Bible and others, but also the Geneva Bible, this one here, and which then led on to the King James and the newer ones that we have today. As we saw during that video, uh, it was during the reign of Queen Mary, Bloody Mary, as they called her, because of her severe persecution of the Protestant clergy, the Protestant, Protestant believers at the time, burning them at the stake, even, and killing them. And so many of them actually fled to Europe, where we ended up with the Geneva Bible, a Bible written with verses and chapters for the Protestant church. Fast forward another 40, 50 years. We have a new monarch. We have Queen Elizabeth I. Queen Elizabeth I is not as sympathetic to the Catholic Church. She's more sympathetic towards the Protestant Church, I believe. And therefore, there is an element, once again, of persecution, this time against the Catholics. And so we have some of the Catholic academics and priests being um, moving from England, Great Britain, over to Europe themselves and forming uh, universities, forming classes, etc., over there. And they came up with the idea of we need a Bible of our own. The Protestants have got this Tyndale Bible. They've got the Geneva Bible. They've got the Great Bible, etc. We need a Bible of our own so we can share it with the people and get them converted back to Catholicism, which is what today's video is all about after all that. It is all about the Douay Reims Bible. And you may say, what is the Douay Reims Bible? Well, it was a Roman Catholic translation of the Bible, translated from the Latin Vulgate. Now, the Latin Vulgate very simply came from around three or 400 AD, where they looked at the Greek and they looked at the Hebrew and they translated it into Latin, which was the language of the Catholic Church, of the clergy, of how they did um, their services, etc. And that carried on through then through the centuries. And so it was translated from the Latin Vulgate into English with some reference to Hebrew and Greek and other English translations. It stated, it started by the English Catholic exiles, as I said, in the English college at the University of Douai, which was in northern France. The translation team was led by a guy called Gregory Martin. He was an Oxford scholar and under the sponsorship of William Allen, who later became Cardinal Allen. And then they had the, as often was the case, the New Testament was published in 1582 in Reims in northern France. And thus we have the Bible called the Douay Reims Bible. Whole, the whole of the Old Testament then was then translated and published uh, by the University of Douai in 1609. We see there's not a great number of years difference between the Geneva Bible and the Douai Reims Bible. So the Douai Reims Bible of the Old Testament had 46 books, including seven deuterocanonical books of the Catholic tradition, such as Tobias or Tobias. Uh, Judith, Wisdom, Ecclesiasticus, Baruch 1 and 2 Maccabees. He also included the longer Septuagint versions of Esther and Book of Daniel. And also they took the old style, which was the Vulgate style of numbering the Psalms. And so if you're trying to compare the Psalms that we have in the Bible today to all the Psalms that they wrote then, you would see that they're about one Psalm out. But then came the, what would you say, the people became more the freer to express themselves. There wasn't the persecution against the Catholic Church or against the Protestant Church. And so people returned back to England, etc. But after a hundred years or so, even though the Douay Reims Bible was in English and it was popular amongst the Catholics who could actually read, it English was becoming outdated. It was becoming antiquated. And let's have a look at some of that old English of the old original Bible. On this page here, we see the uh, 
an original Douay Rheim Bible 1582 and 1610. Uh, this is the book of John, the Gospel of John. And it says here, the preface of the evangelist commending Christ as being God, the Son incarnate to the Gentiles and setting out the blindness of the Jews and not receiving him. Then in the testimony of John Baptist, first to the solemn legacy of the Jews. Secondly, when he saw Jesus come to him. Thirdly, to his own disciple, also putting them over from himself to Jesus, who made is plainer to them that he is Christ. And so began he also to have disciples. So verse one, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and God was the word. This was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was made nothing. That which was made in him was life and the life was the light of men and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it. And so that is, you can see some of the old English style of writing there, and it's a bit um, a bit clunky in, in places as we read through it. And so as, as I said briefly a moment ago, the original Douay Reims Bible was published at a time when the Catholics were being persecuted in Britain and Ireland, and the possession of the Douay Reims Bible was a crime, but by the time possession was not a crime, in the English of the Douay Reims Bible was a hundred years out of date. It was thus substantially revised between 1749 and 1777 by a guy called Richard Callender or Challoner, the Vicar Apostolic of London. Bishop Challoner was assisted by Father Francis Bly, the Carmelite friar, and his revisions borrowed heavily from the King James Version because he himself was actually a convert from Protestantism to Catholicism and thus familiar with his style. So there's a whole mixing of the translations, even though they wanted to have a, a Protestant Bible or a Catholic Bible, they were sort of looking over each other's shoulders as to how did they do it? How did they say this particular thing? Now, if we have a look here, if we have a look here at Ephesians 3 verses 6 to 12 in the original 1582 Dewey New Testament, then we'll have a look at what Chalana or Kalana's revision was, and then we'll compare it to the King James. So here on this page here we have, this is Ephesians 3, 6 to 12 in the original 1582 Douay Rams New Testament. And it says, the Gentiles to be coherers and concorporate and car participant of his promise in Christ Jesus by the gospel, whereof I am made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God, which is given me according to the operation of his power. To me, the least of all the saints is given this grace among the Gentiles to evangelize the unsearchable riches of Christ and to illuminate all men. What is the dispensation of the sacrament hidden from worlds in God who created all things that the manifold wisdom of God may be notified to the princes and Protestants in the celestials by the church, according to the pre definition of the worlds which he made in Christ Jesus, our Lord, in whom we have affiance and access in confidence by the faith of him. <clears throat> and so roughly a hundred years later, we have Chaloner or Chaloner's revision, and it comes out this way, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body, co-partners of his promise in Christ Jesus by the gospel of which I am made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God which is given to me according to the operation of his power. For me the least of all the saints is given this grace to preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to enlighten, enlighten all men that they may see what is the dispensation of the mystery which has been hidden from eternity in God who created all things that the manifold wisdom of God may be made known to the principalities and powers in heavenly places through the church, according to the eternal purpose which he made in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by faith of him. So it's starting to actually read a lot more what we are familiar with today. And for example, here in the 
uh, King James section uh, from uh, the King James version came out that the Gentiles, let me write it down so you can follow along, that's the calendar in there, but this is the King James, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body, partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel, whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me, who am less than the least of all the saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. So we have quite a, a change from the original Douay Reims Bible of the old English and some of the old words which were no longer in use a hundred years later. They modernized it, they took some of the King James formatting and they implemented it into that. One of the things that's not brought out here is that I saw somewhere else is that they actually had a lot of uh, footnotes and comments through the Douay Reims Bible in that they were wanting to um, reinforce their Catholic beliefs um, to the people who were reading this particular Bible. As the Catholics read it, they were able to see and to understand the differences between them being Catholics and the Protestants that were living with them at the time in the, in the country. Here's another example, Psalm 22. Oh, I mean, Psalm 23. Psalm chapter 22. Dominus regit me, God's spiritual benefits to faithful souls. Verse one, a Psalm for David. The Lord ruleth me and I shall want nothing. Ruleth me, in Hebrew, is my shepherd. In other words, to feed, to guide, and to govern me. Verse 2, he hath set me in a place of pasture. He hath brought me up on the water of refreshment. He hath converted my soul. He hath led me on the paths of justice for his own name's sake. For though I should walk in the midst of the shadow of death, I will fear no evils. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they have comforted me. Thou hast prepared a table before me against them that afflict me. Thou hast anointed my head with oil and my chalice, which inebreth me, how goodly is it. And thy mercy will follow me all the days of my life, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord unto length of days. And so we see with the Chalander or the Kalanur, um version of the Douay Reims Bible, it is still in use today in English-speaking Catholics countries today. Yes, there are other various versions of the Catholic Bibles out there, uh, which you can go to the Christian bookshops and you can see the different types of Catholic Bibles. But the Douay Reims Bible, uh, revised by calendar, it, uh, it is still popular amongst quite a few uh, Catholics even today in different countries. In fact, as you know, we have the King James Version only group in the world at the moment and there's no other bible besides the king james version but there is also there is only uh, the douay reims bible group in the world and there's no such other any other bible worth looking at besides the douay reims bible and so it has a very very strong following amongst the catholic english-speaking people and so there it is a first look at a catholic bible a quite a, a significant bible during the time of political and religious uh, turmoil within the within Britain itself at the time. You had the House of Tudors, <coughs> King Henry VIII, you had Mary I, you had Elizabeth I, etc., leading on into James, ex James, King James. And during that time, you had a lot of politics going on, you had a lot of uh, persecution of their various uh, religious groups, Protestants and then Catholics, and out of that came through the necessity Bibles to meet the needs of the Protestants or needs of the Catholic Church at the time. If you've never actually, if you are a Catholic, you probably are familiar with the Douay Reims Bible or a student of, of Bibles themselves. But if you actually haven't read Douay Reims Bible, take the time to actually look it up online 
and uh, have a read through it. You'll find that it's, especially the revised version, it reads very much like the King James in many places. But it is part of our history. It is where the church has come through from. It is part of how we've grown as a Christian, as a Christian nation, as it were. We've had the Protestants, we've had the Catholics, we've had the different divisions happening. But out of all those differences, we've had Bibles which have been put together in order to proclaim the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God, no matter which side of the fence you may particularly sit on. I hope you enjoyed that, this particular video on the Douay Reims Bible. If you have any other suggestions as to Bibles that we could have a look at, please let me know in the comments or send me a message, wherever it may be. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe and share so more people may see it. And until next time, God bless.